Hey, this is Paul Francis from Alta Vista Skate Shop, and you're listening to that rad show, Chuck's Band's Radio Podcast. Check it out. For those of you that follow me on social media know I'm big into skateboarding. I've been skateboarding for over 30 years. It's refreshing to see a skate shop that carries the heart of skating and the culture of San Anto. Today, I'm talking with Paul Francis, owner of Alta Vista Skate Shop here in downtown San Antonio. Paul, how are you doing this fine day in San Anto? I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually the majority owner. I do have a partner. His name is Damien Sandoval. Okay. Yeah. So majority owner of yeah. Alta Vista Skate Shop here on Broadway. What's the address here? 114 Broadway. Uh, we're literally two blocks away from the Alamo. Okay. And with, with technology, just put it in your phone. It'll get you here. Yes. And uh, give the listeners a little bit of history with your background in skateboarding. Well, I started skateboarding right around the age of eight years old. I was in Boy Scouts. At that time, we didn't have Cub Scouts in my neighborhood, so you just had to automatically join Boy Scouts. And when I was in there, there was a couple of guys that skated. His name was Rudy. I can't remember his last name. And uh, after meeting him in that first year, he turned around and put a board together with all these found parts and then it just started from there. It started from there. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, how long, or actually, how, when did you decide to open up a skate shop? Well, you know, I, I kind of think of it as when you're a kid. Well, most kids that skated at that time, you know, they always talked about, man, I, I want to open up a skate shop one day. Or I wish I could open up a skate shop one day. And I had that same dream when I was a kid. And I decided to do it as I got older. And how long has the shop been around? This shop has been around for two and a half years. I did have another shop from 2001 to 2004 called Thrifty 50 Skate Shop. That was my very first shop. This actually is my second shop. And, the, and it was originally located down there in Southtown. Uh, the very first one, no. The very first one was, was sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> the very first one was... Uh, Thrifty 50 was on North Alamo, mm -hmm. uh, Alamo and 9th Street. This one, Alta Vista, was originally located in King William on South Presa. What would you say sets this shop apart from the others here in San Antonio? Well, I think the fact that there's only about two to three independently owned shops is something that already sets it apart on its own. There's really not too many competition out there. There's not too much competition out there. Other than Zoomies and Fast Forward, which are chains, um, I would say Zoomies is more of a chain than Fast Forward. However, uh, independently owned and operated, skater owned and operated, uh, we do help out our community. We do help out uh, skateboarding as much as we can unfortunately it's only myself and and i don't have any employees to help i just have volunteers i guess you could say yeah yeah so th it sets us apart definitely plus the fact that we're downtown we're the only one located inside loop 410 so that that kind of helps if you don't know what loop 410 is it's the the big major circle highway yeah it's a big major in, circle in highway it, it it uh it most cities have something like that. Well, ours, we're downtown, central located. I've always loved the poor old San Antonio attitude from you guys, the the suicidal shirt, the Raiders shirt you did, Spurs shirts. How did those designs come about? Well, the suicidal tendencies, the fact that I've met Mike Mern and suicidal a few times. Dean, the the basis, I believe, is is from San Antonio. I actually met his cousin a couple weeks ago. He He came into the shop. Um, those guys, I, I've, I've met them. I wouldn't say I'm friends or anything, but I've met them a number of times and I've actually told them about the shirt that I had an idea. Of. I'm, I'm sure they forgot about it, but one day I just decided to do it and I, I did it. And then I showed them and tagged them in pictures and they liked it. You know, the original design was done by Lance Mountain. I tagged him in the picture, and he gave it a thumbs up. So that's pretty cool. I guess that's the seal of approval right there, right? <laughs> I guess, yeah. If there was any seals, it would be that thumbs up emoji. That's all I need. And any new designs in the works? Well, uh, I try to come up with a lot of designs, but I do have a lot of other stuff going on, like my screen printing business and my other clothing company, and then a, a new business that I started with a couple of friends 
called Odile Hardware. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff going on, and it's kind of hard to come up with all these ideas. The last shirt I did was the Shred on Me, I believe. It's uh, a play on the Don't Tread on Me, except the Rattlesnake is on a skateboard. And then I have the, uh, you know, there's these shirts going around that have home printed on the state of Texas or Mm. California. We decided, you know, Texas is more of a a homey place. So I put homey on there because everybody in Texas that I know is my homie. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that one. It seems to be a good seller. Might we see uh, another series of Spurs decks with the upcoming season coming out? Well, you know, the the series is pretty tough. I, 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 uh, I do that out of love, and I print up a lot, and it takes a long time to, to get my money back. So I think this time I'm going to be doing individual players, and I was hoping LaMarcus Aldrich would be one of these players, but mm-hmm. it seems like he's, he's on his way out. He, he doesn't want to be here. But I do know that I'll be doing a uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard, of course, maybe a uh, Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili uh, on one board since Manu might be gone. And this is like, you know, close to their final seasons. I think Manu got signed up for two years. Yeah. But on, in his last year, I don't see him playing more than like 15 minutes a game or something. You were talking about the the hardware company that uh, you started. Uh, you sell a lot of local brands here. What brands do you carry here at the shop that are local, San Antonio? The local brands that I have here is Country Club, Dirty Boys, uh, Southtown Skateboards. I wouldn't call this company local, but they might as well be. They're from Spring Branch. This one's Beer Joint. Um, the new company that I'm, I'm one of the owners of, Orele. The other owner is David, or excuse me, David Castillo and Chris Coulter, which are old friends of mine. And uh, last but not least, there's major boards, but majors out of the valley, out of South Texas. And uh, I, I like representing those guys. Those, those guys are a pretty good crew right there. And Embassy out of Houston. Embassy out of Houston. Actually, uh, one of the Embassy pro riders, Ben Johnson, I've known him growing up. His dad used to own SA, SA Skate Park, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And Ben rides for the shop. Basically, he just gets whatever he wants whenever he wants, which is great because uh, I've seen him growing up. Um, he rides for Embassy, and we carry Embassy from time to time. Uh, usually the, the bigger boards from old school dudes want to get, you know, a Craig Johnson or something like that. Or John Gibson. John Gibson, well. of course. And um, the other big companies that you do carry here, major companies, which ones do you think are the most skater-friendly? The skater-friendly, say that again, the skater-friendly? Like, uh, the, major, the major companies, you know, almost all those. Oh. Uh, which ones do you think are probably the most skater-friendly brands? You know, I think it's a toss-up here. There's so many different brands right now, East Coast, West Coast, things like that. And uh, And right now, you know... Out of the East Coast, actually, they're from Europe. Magenta is doing all right. Out of the rest of the stuff, I would say uh, Michael Sieben's company. You know, when when I get a, 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 I think it's Welcome. Is it Welcome or or Program? It might be Program. I think it's Program. Yeah, I think he did some art for Welcome, but I think it's Program that he owns. I only have one board on the wall, and usually I have like six. You know, those companies, Welcome, Program, those companies do really well here. Today, you know, we've been doing the skate stuff for a long time. It seems like there's a kind of big separation between, like, old school skaters, new school skaters. Will will there ever be a time where everybody can just kind of get along? Like, you know, the old guys get out there, you know, kind of get off my lawn. You know what I've seen? This is what I've seen in owning a skate shop. See, when I had my first one, there was a lot of a lot of young kids, 2001 to 2004. You know, all of us had the streets. I think right around that time, I want to say this is a rumor, but it was said that San Antonio has the most skater per uh, capita based on sales. And at that time, San Antonio doesn't grow up. It grows out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're almost connected to New Braunfels by now and San Marcos. It's a hop skip away. Um, 
now when I look at it, all those skaters from back then, you know, they had their kids, you know, 15, 16 years has gone by. Now I see them taking their kids to the shop and they're skating with their kids. So when it comes to old school dudes, I guess old school in their late 30s and 40s, I see, I see that quite a bit. Uh, I also see the the guys coming in and like, oh, I used to skate and, you know, my mm. kids are grown up and I want to get another board again and, and try it out. My wife won't like it, but uh, I don't care. You know, and I see that quite a bit, too. Now, when it comes to older than that, I do see a few people that are late 40s, 50s. There's this one dude named Jimmy who comes over once in a while. He's I think he's pushing 60 and he's he's pretty inspirational right there. And, uh, you know, I like seeing the old guys like Alva, Hawk, Cab that are still out there doing it, still doing tricks. You think young skaters today, even though they're not shredding like they did back in the 80s and 90s, can learn from, like, the old school guys? Well, I, I do see um, I do see young skaters checking out old videos. You, you, get, you know, you always got this different style and genre of, of skaters right now at this age. So there's a couple of group of kids that come in here and, you know, they're kind of metal, kind of punk. And, of course, they're into Creature and they're into, um, you know, mystery and things like that. That darker image style mm-hmm. kind of artwork, which they go and look at Mike Vallely, you know, old school style like that. And, you know, they check out Caballero. When it comes to Josoy, he they like his graphic, but you know Josoy was a was a ramp skater, and there's not too many transitional ramp yeah. skaters here. But the most influential, I think, out of all of them is definitely going to be Mark Gonzalez. He's always going to be the one of the most influential guys in skateboarding in general. And then when it comes to San Antonio, I do see a lot of a lot of skaters looking at Mark Gonzalez videos from you know blind or, or uh, you know things like that. I try to tell him you know look up an ATM video and see if you can catch a clip of him. He was one of the owners of that, so it, it's kind of crazy. There was another company he was part owner of. People don't even remember it, and it was sixty forty, and that was a really good. one. it's nothing but Mexicans on that group, and it was it was pretty rad. And you you see like like. A newer guy like Killian Martin, kind of bringing back the freestyle. Rodney Mullen, yes. you think freestyle will ever see kind of a resurgence? That dude, that dude is is uh, pretty good. He's also very loyal to his companies. I think he's on Powell. Yeah, and uh, his style is definitely influenced by by Rodney Mullen, uh, Dewan Song. He definitely adds his own flair to it. Um, I see that guy, you know, another classic, you know, skater that's going to go on forever with that. And, and, and eventually, like right now, he's pretty influential, but I see him as a, as a legend, you know, definitely in the, in the book of legends. And, and do you think it's a good thing for skateboarding having the resurgence of like the old companies like Pal, Santa Cruz that are doing a lot of the reissue boards? Maybe kind of giving the younger kids well, sort of a history lesson of, of where... Today's skateboarding came from. Well, when it comes to reissues, as a fan, I'm okay with reissues. I, I think the artwork is good. I think it's great to go see. Uh, you can go buy a Corey O'Brien Santa Cruz, and, and that board is definitely an iconic board. But when I see those boards coming out, I see two things. I see, yeah, you could show the, the young kids, hey, check out these boards, check out these graphics, you know, this is this is how the graphics used to be, this is what the shapes used to be. Although it's not the original shape, it doesn't have that beveled edge. You know, most of these boards are wall hangers. And, and, it, and it goes two different ways. You get the person now, like myself, who started in the 80s and in the 90s, you know, we were up there skating every day. In early 2000s, we were still there, and then it started dying down. And you miss that stuff, and now we have jobs, and we can afford those yeah, boards, exactly. and we can put those <laughs> boards on our wall. But then, um, so they got two different types of people that they're catering to. They're catering to the old school collector guy, and they're trying to cater to the young skater who wants to try a shaped board. And it's good. It also makes me wonder how sales are doing for these companies. I know uh, right now I just got a couple emails from Santa Cruz about these pre-booking for some boards. 
And it's crazy because these these boards sell out quick yeah. just from the from the manufacturers to the retailers. There's times where I could put myself on a list and I won't even be able to get one. You know, yeah, so it's it's insane. And who are some of your favorite pros right now? Um, all around pros or the yeah. new pros? Like like newer newer. Oh, age uh, pros. you know, I kind of dig Sean Malta. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, he to me, he is one of those park skaters. Uh, you know, he's in those competitions and everything. However, he does skate really good when he skates street. And, uh, you know, I dig him. Um, I'm trying to think of some some newish skaters. I know. I know. I, I'm really dig Pedro Barros. Pedro Barros is good. Um, you know, I, when it comes to... People f- that are new right now, I'm trying to look on my wall to see if I have anybody's new pro board. But I, I, the, most of the people are like magenta dudes. That, and believe it or not, I, I, I hate to say this. I don't really watch all their videos to see their names. I only watch to see their tricks. Yeah. And, and, and they're really good. I think right now, though, the, the ones that capture my eye a lot are those people that skate for, um, I think it's called Pyramid Country. Those guys skate really good. They actually did like a little tour or something. They did a lot of filming here in San Antonio, and I didn't even notice it until I was watching the video like for the third time. And I was like, "Hey, wait a minute! That, that's that's over here." Yeah, it's like, "Hey, that's yeah. like that's like four blocks away." So yeah, those, those park skaters, you know, Sean Malto is good. Um, Shane O'Neill came out with this park on Nike SB. Even though we don't carry Nike, we still watch that stuff. That was pretty awesome. Um, and then when it comes to the older skaters, I, I, I seem to more accustomed to them. You know, mm. uh, right now I saw a video from fucking awesome or F.A. I'll call it F.A. You if can you cut, edit you can that cuss. out. Yeah. You can cuss. And, um, <laughs> you know, there's Jason Dill and Anthony Van England. Those guys skate pretty damn good because they're older. However, you go show me uh, Jason Dill from photosynthesis and that's one of my favorite parts you know that I, i've always dig alien workshop videos and that one was definitely influential you know mark gonzalez even to this day he'll come out with a clip and it'll just be him with like three tricks still doing handrails like mm-hmm. you know and this i think he's probably like close to 50 now yes yeah, and he's, he's still doing there. handrails and, and that's insane um you know, there's Ben, who rides for Embassy. People don't really pay attention to him, but that dude's such an awesome transitional skater. Uh, I do dig his skating. Uh, I'm trying to think who else there might be. You know what? Cody McIntyre. He's another Texas skater. I, check, I like to check him out just to see what he's been up to. Uh, that's pretty much it I could think of right now offhand. <laughs> You know, when it comes to San Antonio skaters, like one of the biggest ones I, I do like checking out is uh, this guy named Damien Olivo. He actually, he was living here. I think he's over in uh, in Las Vegas right now. And he just came out with a clip last night of him ollieing over a rail from 13 stairs. And then they told him, hey, just go ahead and do a 180. And then he ollied over a rail 13 stair rail 180 i thought that was pretty insane and it seems like with technology today it's a lot easier for skaters to get their stuff out there clips of them to where they could possibly get sponsored because i remember back in the 80s it was like you hoped somebody might have a camcorder at some point oh yeah yeah so when it comes to technology and social media and the way things are going right now um you know coming from back then from when I had my first shop, you know, it was a lot harder. You know, you had AOL. Nobody was really sending uh, emails and messages. You know, you're lucky if you had that Yahoo uh, chat. Yeah. You know. However, right now, the way things are going, you can put a clip on social media, on your Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat. And if you tag the right people, yeah, you, you could see it. But as soon as it comes in, what I've noticed is it as soon as it comes in, it's it's old news three minutes later. Like, I don't even want to bother with it Um, unless it's amazing, unless it's something amazing. And 
and then I'll, I'll take interest. However, I think with the generation right now, they don't mind being insta famous. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once in a while they'll get hooked up with a board or two, and they'll be they'll be happy with that. That's not only from me, but like from whoever. You know, when it comes to social media and getting sponsored, well, that's a different story. I still think they have to take the time out to go and visit their local skate shops. And, and at least let the owner or, or someone know, man, I get so many messages. I, I got to get at least anywhere from five to 15 messages a month asking, hey, are you hiring or are you sponsoring? I really could use a board. And then they'll send me a clip and they're ollieing over like a rock or something, like a little boulder. <laughs> and, and it's insane that like they think they're this good to get sponsored. This one kid came in here and said, "Dude, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a clip now that I know." And I'm like, "Well, you don't even follow the shop." And yeah. And then when I check out their clip, they just do like a, a nollie heel flip, like maybe four inches tall, and they are expecting to get you know a free ride. Nobody wants to put the work in anymore. Yeah, nobody wants to put the work in anymore, and I'm I'm kind of disappointed in that. Do you think that? It also with with social media and technology, kids get into skateboarding because they see stuff like like Bam Margera stuff with Jackass, and it's like, hey, if I just get a skateboard and I can do a couple of tricks and do something stupid, I could be a millionaire and driving a purple Lamborghini. Okay, so when when you bring up Bam Margera, that definitely shows your age. So yeah. <laughs> Bam Margera was early two thousands, and yeah, I saw a lot of kids when I had my first shop trying to act like Bam Margera and putting themselves in a uh, shopping cart and pushing themselves mm-hmm. into bushes and stuff. Right now, the biggest thing is let's go do no complies and let's go do hippie jumps and you know let's let's emulate that style. Yet, you know, they could sit there and do a, a nollie nose slide, um, but they can't do a regular ollie over like a trash can or something. And, and it's very disappointing um, when that happens. And, and that's what they seem to be emulating, that whole East Coast influential style, that whole East Coast influential uh, way of... of uh, clothing fashion, you know, let's cut off the bottom of our pants and wear them super tight and uh, go from there. And I am kind of disappointed in it, but I also think that's pretty good if they if they can at least learn that. Just give them a year and they'll start learning other tricks. It's just I didn't grow up that way. I guess that's why I'm so disappointed in it. <laughs> and then I yeah. guess follow up to that would sort of be what are your thoughts on non-skaters wearing Thrasher gear? Well, you know, I'm happy for Thrasher, of course. They they were they were always a good magazine. Unfortunately, I wasn't one of those Thrasher guys. I was more of a Trans World guy. Mm-hmm. I, I liked the whole Thrasher magazine uh, vibe in the er, when it first you know when I first picked it up in the '80s, and I thought it was pretty rad. And then in the '90s, you know, I didn't I didn't like the transition. Mm-hmm. Uh, of what was going on. But I still, of course, I was a big Thrasher fan. But when, when Transworld came out and their books, or excuse me, their magazines were more like books. Mm-hmm. And they got over like 200 pages in there, maybe 300 pages or something like that. I thought that was amazing, of course. For the money that I'm spending, I'm going to want to see more stuff. Mm-hmm. Plus, Tran- uh, plus Transworld had like a photo issue and they had AM issues and... They had all this different stuff that I liked that it catered to. Um, when it comes to the whole Thrasher vibe that's going on right now, and you got people like, I think, Migos and um, Rihanna. Rihanna wearing Thrasher shirts, you know. I think I think it's part of the fashion, but I also think of you got to look at how long Thrasher has been around. You know, mm. these guys were in school at one time when they saw that skater kid wearing it. The only difference is these uh, artists and, and, and celebrities, you know, they just – they were too busy doing their own uh, thing to to get, you know, where they're at today. What I think is – I think it's cool that, that Thrasher's all right, you know, selling all their stuff and everybody's just buying it even though they don't skate. What I don't like is the fact that Thrasher can sit there and call themselves, you know, we're there with you, 
core shops, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. What I've, one of the things that, that kind of upsets me is the fact that what people don't know is Thrasher has bumped up the price in the past year for cost of their shirts, which means if they were if they were with the small businesses, they would at least say, you know what, let's let's let the major corporations pay a little more, but let's help out these smaller the local, the local yeah. things and it, it's it's things like that that put uh local businesses you know local shops out of business that's that's what ends up happening so yeah you can go to zoomies and find you know tables dedicated to thrasher and you can go to a real skate shop and you'll only find like maybe six or seven shirts yeah yeah and uh speaking of like major companies you guys did a collaboration with enjoy skateboards yes how did that all happen well i'm a big fan of of enjoy in general um you know louis barletta i follow him and and caswell berry and jose rojo and all those dudes i've always i've always dig their videos and their vibe and just out of nowhere on a whim i turn around and ask louis barletta on social media hey you know can we do a collab i have an idea and I didn't think he was going to come back to me, but he did. And when I told him the idea, he loved it. I had a, a local artist and skater friend of mine that I've known well over 15, 20 years. His name is uh, Aaron Gossas. So I told him what I wanted, and he did a little doodle, and he loved it. When I when I showed uh, Louis Barletta, uh, Louis turned around and was like, yes, you know, let's do this. Let me email you um, all the all the illustrations and stuff from Illustrator and Photoshop so you can do it proper with proper uh, color codes and things like that. So when I sent it over to Aaron and we did the whole thing, the original color of this board was supposed to be uh, white. And then I changed it. Uh, after the first edit, and it was done, I changed it to navy. And then when I sent it over to uh, Louis Barletta and those guys over at Enjoy, they turned around and turned it pink. If you guys haven't seen the board, instead of the panda um, humping the other panda, it's a panda humping a taco. And if you look closely into the taco, the little burn marks make another panda's face. <laughs> so it was it was pretty funny. Louis turned around and said he really liked it. He just wishes that the sombrero that's on the the top panda was bigger because he said, quote, unquote, nothing, uh, nothing makes a party better than a bigger, a big sombrero. So we had to put a big sombrero on him. It was pretty good. And then we put confetti and everything on on the board, like digital, what digital, I guess design in there was confetti and, and of course our logo and. It turned out really great. I actually have two boards left, and one of them is mine on the wall, and the other one is actually for sale. So. And if people want to find out how they can get a board, you know, come by in person or online, find y'all, how can they do that? So I'm really good on social media. You can go to Instagram, uh, AltaVista210. And if you message me, I'm really good about, about getting back to people. Unless you're messaging me, like, at, you know, 3 to, like, 8 in the morning, I won't be replying. But I do actually wake up and I see my social media and I could sit there and, and eat my tacos and, you know, reply to people. I do get some messages about certain shirts and boards and stuff like that. And we do ship, but you have to get a you have to get back to me on social media. That's the best way to do it. And um, I'm really good about it. So and before we go thrashing or gleaming the cube. Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm gonna say thrashing, man. I'm friends with. Uh, I'm, I'm not friends, but I do follow Josh Brolin mm-hmm. on, uh, on social media. Dude's crazy. He's looking huge. I don't know if you've seen him. It's for I, it's he, some Marvel movie. He's or something doing like a that? Marvel movie, and if you go go through his pictures, Dude's you ripped. could see the the progression of how his workouts have been going, and he's huge. I mean, this guy is giant. Um, the other guy, if you guys don't know his name, is Robert Rustler. He was, uh, sl- I think his name was Slash or something Hook. like that. Hook, Hook in the Daggers. There you go. Hook in the Daggers. Um, yeah, I follow him too, and his son skates. And he takes his son to the skate park, and his son actually skates pretty good. I think he's like, I don't know, 10 years old or something like that. So, yes, I do follow both those guys. And uh, 
I'm a big thrashing fan. However, Gleaming the Cube is up there. You know, it's pretty good. From I think there's another movie with that Paul Rodriguez guy. Uh, I can care less about yeah. that. There was another movie that came out, and I really liked it. It was about um, it was about these four guys, and they want to go skateboarding or something like that, and go do this contest. It's such a cheesy movie. It might even be a Disney movie. I <laughs> I don't know, but it, it was pretty entertaining more than more than that Paul Rodriguez movie. So I, if I ever find the name, I'll post it up on social media if anybody asks. And if you ever find a copy of Thrashing on DVD, I own it, and oh. the commentary really? is with Rustler. With Steve Olson, the director, the, it is absolute. You will crack up. Really? I cannot watch the movie without watching the commentary. Wow! Now I yeah. now I gotta check out the commentary. Usually, when I get in that mood of thrashing, I can actually find it on uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, they have it the on whole YouTube. Thing on YouTube. Yeah. Well, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure, and having lived in San Anto my whole life, I gotta say I put Alta Vista Skate Shop right up there with Zulus.